This tutorial goes over the 3D viewer and how you can render out of it, along with some hotkeys and helpful tips. So first off, just to go over the navigation again, is holding down Alt and left click will rotate around your model. Alt right click will zoom in and out. And Alt middle click will pan around. Uh, if you hold down C, you will see the color ID map. And if you're in paint mode, you can hold down M and it will show you the masking of this uh, your object. If you hold down C and click on some a material ID, it will assign uh, whatever layer you have to that material ID. If you hold down C and shift, it will add a new smart material to that color ID. Uh, there's also the I, J, K, and L hotkeys that go to your top, right, left, other views. It will just rotate around um, kind of like the WAS keys. If you hit P on your keyboard, this will switch between orthographic mode and perspective. And if you want to move the light, it's holding down shift and right click. This will move it right and left. If you hold down shift and control, it will move the light up and down. And again, using the right click for this. Hitting F on your keyboard will frame your object, um, and W will show the wireframes. The 1, 2, 3, 4, these will show the different maps. It's also here on your top, so you can go from between the gloss and albedo. Um, and if you click twice on something, so like 1 is technically albedo, if you click it again, it will go back to the PBR shading. So if I hit three, it'll just kind of toggle between the two. If you have multiple groups, it will show specific ones here, or you can show all groups. Uh, you can also change the HDRI that you're using, so you can see this in different lighting. Like they have Unreal, two different kind of lightings. You can change the exposure, the ambient light, and the directional light's intensity with all these different sliders. If you really want to, you can have a headlight which kind of blows out your texture, but it is an option. Or you can just have it to set to spin the light, and there is a spin amount here. So you can see it started to rotate around. The higher this value, the faster it will spin. If you want to, you can change the mesh that you're looking at on. Um, or you can load up a custom mesh by this other button. You can turn turntable on if you want. So you can have your ro object rotate as well instead of the light or with the light. It's all sorts of rotation. But it can be handy if you just want to look at and see from different angles without uh, updating. You can have different camera views in this section and save them, create new ones, delete them however you want. And far end is the render button. So you can set the dimensions and click on the render button and it will save, go to your project here and save out PNGs. And if you want to show the animator, you can set some hotkeys to do a little bit of an animation like, oh, change your camera here, go up, look at that, zoom in whatever. I'm going to hide my camera animator. There's also the field of view, so if you want to change that, you can change how much of a view you have. Uh, then there's post processes. I recommend starting with the clean one so you're not, you can see what it actually looks like. Uh, once you get farther on, you'll want to change this. They have some presets down in here. Um, clean fast so it renders a little bit quicker. There's uh, really different ones here, like there's the Oho photo, so you can look like it's a western or something. Um, pretty extreme ones, as well as just kind of basic ones. Unreal, we have in these, and I'll just put the image behind. If you like the lighting of this, I'm going to change it to the Unreal 2 for 
If you like the lighting effect, but you don't want the image of whatever is behind, you can change, click on this solid backdrop icon, and there's a drop down list to change it for how much brightness you want. And if you want a color, you can uncheck gray and find to fine tune your color. But let's start with clean. Uh, if you want to have your wireframe, you can click on this and change your color. So if you want it to be black, white, whatever works for your particular model. I'm not going to have wireframes on. It's pretty self-explanatory with all of these different pieces. But a couple of one I like to have is high quality resampling. Uh, Post-process sharpening is kind of nice. You can change the intensity. The screen space ambient occlusion quite nice and you can change you can visualize this to see how it is working Oops. and change the intensity so this is screen based intensity of your AO once you're happy with it just uncheck that and you have your full view you can simulate the physical camera so a lot of cameras will do different things that it looks a little bit more realistic if you have them, like chromatic abrasion. And it's kind of just warps, almost like a bubbling effect uh, when the lens distorts things a little bit. So just a little bit of this does go a long way, uh, but you don't have to have that, obviously. There's blooming, color gradients. I love having optical vignetting on. Just change the scale. Um, you can have some sensor noise or some lens stains. Give it a little bit of graininess. Let me turn off the optical abrasion. And you can also do some contrasting intensity, saturation of all of that stuff. So you can have a really nice render. See, very saturated, very desaturated. Or at one is kind of default. There we go. Now, if you're happy with this new setting that you have, you can click on this little page icon and say, rename this as your rendering type. So I'm going to name this basic render and hit create. Now you can save that. And if you make any changes, delete it, but it will be in your drop down list here. Uh, so you can switch between whatever view. So you have this one that you made previously, or your basic render, whatever one you think works best for this. And then hit the render button to save out your PNG. And it will save it at whatever resolution you set. And the default is 1920 by 1080. That should be all of the main things that you need to know about using DDo and how you can change different aspects of this. I hope this tutorial was helpful. I'll see you next time. Bye.